Hey there, boys, girls, YouTube world. Today, me, myself, and I are down in rural Delmon, South Dakota, at the Larry Schumann Estate Sale. Schumann, Sh Schumann, Schumann. I'm gonna get Schumann. This is a Peterson auction. One of you guys or gals sent it to me on Facebook. There was a live video. A lot of 55, six Chevy parts. There's a 55 hardtop, 56 hardtop, 59 El Camino, 59 Brookwood wagon. Uh, anyway. We're gonna go check it out. I got up at the butt crack at dawn this morning. We drove through uh, a Tiffany, South Dakota, found out where she's from. And uh, we're gonna see what we can find. Duff said, you know what? You go ahead, I'm gonna do some work at the shop. So it's just, just me today. He said he doesn't like people. He likes people even less than me. Nice uh, driveway here. Oh, just uh, somebody guessed I lost their trailer light in the tree. But yeah. There's a lot of parts here. Hopefully we can find something good. And for once, we're an hour early. Uh, auction starts at 10 and it is nine. And I think we're still in the same time zone. So that's good. I'm guessing they don't want us to go up there. And I don't want to go through there with a the trailer, but wow, really well-organized Peterson auction. Looks like there's people parking over here. So we're gonna find uh, somewhere to park. Try to park close so we don't have far to carry stuff. Rows and rows of tires and cars and fenders and oil cans and bumpers and a lot of parts. Tons and tons and tons of parts. Looks like a Tempest four door. Somebody started primering. Another Tempest car look at this 55 chevy the tube grill in it custom he's been patched over the fenders been painted factory hubcaps no engine or transmission yeah looks like she had a floor shifter at one point stewart warner green line water temp gauge that's pretty neat that's pretty neat no pins oil sticker a lot of these cars got titles so that's a plus Rot in the floor is pretty typical. Yeah, that would be a cool car to get going. Looks like the rear end's gone, unfortunately. I'm guessing that was in a barn or a building, the way the windows are all dirty like that. Yeah. 57 truck, 55 to 57, 67 to 72 truck. I think this is a 48 fleet line. These are cool cars. These things get super rotten in the floors. This one's good though. Man, it's still got most of the seat in it even. They like to rust here and then right down here by the tail lights. Pretty good. Then the trunk lid. Floor is super solid. This and the rear fenders. 48, no title. Missing the grill. Another 48. Four door Fleet Master. Two door, I don't know, every one of these years, 49 to 54. I think it's, I'm not even gonna say, 52. I don't know all the quirks about the grills. This one's a 53 or four over here. Another 55 four door, no title. Advanced design truck, and a couple advanced design pickups. These don't look too bad. Oof, that's a 53 or four or five. It's got the one piece windshield. Rusty up there and the A pillar. Another quirky thing about these, they got the flat bedsides on them. The 47 to 53s don't. And then of course the grill that I don't care for. And here's a 47 to 53. They're saying it's a 52. Geez, last tagged in 99. Factory call grill. Somebody put some different headlights around in it. A later model. Bench seat in it, doors chain shut jack on the fender and these cars got pickups got a torque tube these pickups should have a drive shaft the 55s did anyway first series here's the 55 hard top i'm guessing they come out of that barn right there a little rust in the quarters factory two-tone car no title on this one there's no vin tag either unfortunately 
typical rust in the fenders. This has already been chicken wired and bondoed up. So I'm guessing this side has probably had the same treatment. No drivetrain. I think these cars were at 1700 bucks already before the auction started. There is some pre-bidding online. Not a bad car, seats are in it. How's the floors? This was a manual car. Somebody cut a hole in the floor and converted it to floor shift. Or no, it was an automatic car. They must have had automatic shifter down there. No back seat. Look at all that glass. Oofed. That would suck to haul. Gold 56 here. Got a title. Again, a little rust in the quarters and the rockers. Everything, including the kitchen and bathroom sinks. If you're a Green Bay Packers fan, a good one for you. Oh yeah, even the toilets. This guy, old Larry would drag anything home apparently. That definitely was a raccoon. Last tag in 68. Highway Chevrolet, Rock Valley, Iowa. Oh, that's cool, University of South Dakota parking pass. Pretty solid. Very solid floors, anyway. She's been fixed and mudded up in the quarters. Floor's got a few holes in them. No front seat in this car. 58 to 60 Impala wheel. Look at the dash, how nice it is. It's too bad these cars are half stripped out. Good builders, though. Bunch of batteries, I'm guessing we'll go for scrap. That's cool in old Allstate. Delco caps, little 216 Chevy 6. Another advanced design, that one's a long box. All of them been three window cabs. Tillers and blowers, and grass seeders, wheelbarrows, woven wire, all the wire. Massey Ferguson mower, coast to coast. Yeah, you can tell there used to be some buildings back here that are no longer. Sure there were cars in them at one point it doesn't look like the place has been inhabited for a while unfortunately we're fortunate i don't know nobody's living here i hope more scrap nothing i can't live without oh this one's a gmc a little different grill 47 chevy doesn't have the bar on the center 59 el camino for sure the el camino schmucked up in this fender pretty good it's been repainted Missing some of the trim, a whole lot of Bondo in the quarters. Man, some of that old body work is rough. Somebody started doing some body work again. A lot of this trim here is El Camino only. Uh, tail light trim is the same as a wagon, which conveniently is right there. So you're probably gonna need that car for a lot of that stuff. Tail lights are the same as a car, but they're cut right there, so. You gotta get them off a wagon or an El Camino. Yeah, she's uh, a little chewy down there. Power glide in the back. No engine. Nothing on here's got an engine. It's got some bucket seats. Whew, those are some big coon turds. I think that steering wheel's on like that 54 Chevy truck. Oh, I bet they stole the wheel out of this car and put in that 56. Yeah, I think those are like 64 Chevy buckets. Good pieces. Not a good car, but it's a 59 El Camino. Clutch car. Power glide in the back, cast iron one, but this car is a clutch pedal car. Must have been factory white. Brookwood wagon. It's got a lot of trim on it. A lot of guys like these roofs for putting in like Model A's and they fill the roofs in those cars. This car's a lot better. I'm guessing this was in a building and something fell on it right there though. I thought there was a bumper sitting by this car, but I could be wrong. Oh boy. Bluetooth floors. Three on the tree. I see no transmission in there. Every one of these cars is missing the drivetrains. Back fender's pretty schmucked up. She's tough. No title. 
on that one, but there is a title on the El Camino. Some re a rear end and a front end out of a four wheel drive. I don't know enough of a four wheel drive to tell you what those are. Probably square body. 48 Chev Coupe. Again, not a bad car. Mostly there. It's just like a 71 2 Buick. Vinyl top. Ruined it. Pontiac. Derby car guys already stole the shocker bumper. I'd say that's like a 73 to 75. Late model stuff. Two wheel drive square body that's been picked clean. Another square body that's picked apart. And a three quarter ton four wheel drive square body that's been picked. Just boxes of totes and totes of parts. Tail lights, horns, mirrors, lights. There's an old Wagner power bleeder. Put some air in this thing, hook it up to your master cylinder, and pushes fluid through so you can uh, bleed them by yourself. Those things are cool. But if the diaphragm's bad, they're uh, paperweights, so we would have to go cheap. Tri power air cleaner. Yep. Pretty good shape. I don't think that's the right lid. But maybe. It's not a Chevy, it's got the Starburst, so I think it's a Pontiac or a Buick. The Link Welder. Oh yeah, here it is. The Marquette Charger. Same as Chin and I got, these things are great. You can weld with them. Must have bought every air compressor you saw in Nipco. Torches, welding helmets, jacks, drill bits, a couple old floor jacks, bottle jacks, a couple gas pumps there, probably from the 80s, a little bit newer. Food trucks here, that's all we need. Oh, look at this box. Radiator for 1927 Chevrolet model AA West Shell. Where are you gonna find another one of those boxes? Wow. Filled this fence line full of rocks. Better than having fence, I guess. Gets rid of your rocks too, kind of. We are in wind tower country as well. Sometimes you gotta check out this old farm stuff just to see what it is. This is a log splitter. It's got a Hodge sweat flying gauge cluster in it. And what's it powered by? Chevy? Oh yeah. Like a 230 or a 250. Huh. Yeah, somebody built that. Suspension sets down on the ground and you can pin it in place quite the anomaly <laughs> and then he's got a little farm all power unit with a farm all engine on it and a flexi hose coil springs must be a cherry picker for picking either ice or bales continental engine I guess hey trolley the new manufacturing company Canton Ohio here's a 54 55 box well 54 they're saying got the flat top on it Unlike most auctions, these guys, they know what their stuff is. Usually you go to these and they have no idea. Some frames, X frames, so I'm guessing that's GM. These kind of look like Tri-5 Chevy frames. Pretty rough shape, but might be some pieces for somebody. Especially if you buy the car without a rear end, if there's one. Oh yeah, there's a Tri-5 bumper on it. Yep. I think that's a 58 frame. I think 58's the only one that had that silly yoke on the top. Tri-5 front fenders, rusty above the eyebrow. 62 hood, 61 hood, 57 hood. 54 hood? 
two door doors, square body stuff. Nice. New old stock quarter panel, advanced design fenders. There's the fenders off the uh, fleet line. Dang nice. 55 left front fender. 64 to 66 Chevy grills and a GMC. 64 5 Chevelle. It's like a 51 Chevy bumper with the factory bumper guard on it. Pontiac front clip. Bunch of 58 stuff. Some more Tri 5 doors and a 55 hood, deck lid. 57 fender, 55 fenders, 59 grill, some 47 Chevy car grills, fenders for the same, 58 four door doors, some steering columns, good stuff right here, back half of some Tri-5 two doors, so for your two door conversion DD speed shop, there's two of them, this is a 55. I don't know what model, what year that is, but they all will work for what you're doing. Bench seats, a couple aluminum wheels, square body hood. Yeah, a bunch of hoods. There's a bird bath tin grill hood. You can tell because it's got the bird bath. There's a swept line hood, you can see because it's got the washboards on it. Flamed hood off of a, I don't know what that is. Nova, Chevy 2. You don't get me wrong, I don't know everything, but I know enough. I always want to know more though. There's some swept line fenders full of mud. Hubcaps, steering wheels. Oh, those are some cool Pontiac dog dishes. I used to think those hubcaps were so hideous and now they're kind of growing on me. I think they're 67 to 72 and then some of the square bodies at them too with those goofy wide lugs 70 pontiac so we got on white lightning mirrors 58 chevy tail lights 56 chevy trim swept line gauge cluster 67 to 72 pickup gauge cluster oldsmobile Mirror for your visor. Door handles. Oh my gosh. So many smalls. Look at all them 55 grills. Four of them. Trim. You name it. There's some 59 car tail lights. You can tell they're not cut. 55 tail lights. 56 tail light. Holy steering wheels. <clears throat> Couple cool old banjos in here three of them these are gm i'm not even gonna this one's a little bit different it's got a solid spoke on the bottom these are not solid but they're usually an accessory wheel pretty good property if you come across them oh my gosh more totes of hubcaps a whole bunch of uh chevrolet tailgates and a gmc five of them Bed pieces, bed sides, fuel tanks, weight model doors. Yeah, if you're looking for doors, place to go. Utica Police, 67 to 72 Chevy pickup door. And the mate to it. There's a 56 front clip. Advanced design running boards. This is gonna take all day. Hard top doors for a 56. Another Tri-5 front door. Glad we got here early to look through all this. Holy buckets. They said they're gonna start early and they're gonna run two rings, so it's gonna go quick. Here's all the bumpers. Bunch of Tri-5 stuff. Must be interior for that 56, I would assume. Some farm all sheet metal. Oh my gosh, one engine. Just trying to figure out where all the engines were out of these things. 
283 out of a Tri-5. It's got the front engine mounts. And it's got the manifolds like we like to crack on the 38 Ford. I don't know why this happened. I thought I kind of didn't just crank one bolt down but that manifold split right there. And of course this is the special manifold. It's a, I think it's a 55 manifold. Cool old Anko wiper box. Oh yes, that's what we came for. The headers, long tube, small block. I feel like I'm gonna throw up. 67 to 72 Chevy floor humps, haul for four speeds. Some ram horn manifolds. Wiper cowls. A lot of Dodge Util Uteline body parts. <laughs> or Uteline swept line, there's a swept line dash. More bumpers. Ford air cleaners. Advanced design running boards. Those are good to have if you're converting a long bed to a short bed. They always rust out. Well, here's one that's tipped upside down. They got this brace right here. And the dirt sits in that brace and rusts them out right there. But this one's good. Another 55 grill. All right, we're gonna go get a number and start bidding. There's Ben Doloff, go check out his channel. I don't know, Doloff Antiques on YouTube. Tell him Mortsky sent you in the comments. Well, we're going here, it looks like Ben Doloff's bidder number 42, and he's got a nice pile of trim right there. Down on the ground. I'm sure all that stuff will be on eBay. There's a few guys bidding over there, but once they get done with this trailer, this is all the online stuff, then they, I guess we're going to the cars. A couple of the cars are online. We're 106, 1955 Chevy two two door Bel Air hardtop. Uh, no title with it there, guys. And what do we think here? We got all right, and we've got 27.50 online going up from there. 27.50 now, three thousand dollars. A 3700, a 3600 dollar bit of 37, 3700 dollar bit of 36 now, 37, 36 now, 37, 36 now, 3700. Sold at 3600 dollars. 34. All right, lot number 107, we've got the 1956. And with that, I've got 2750 online going up from there. 2750, anybody else there? 3,000 now, 3,100, last time around. 3,000 now, 3,100. Sold $3,000, same way, same way. We've got lot number 110. We've got that 1959 Chevy El Camino there, guys. This one does have a title. Um, and I tell you what, pretty much complete. The box isn't all gone on it. Um, you're going to buy her there. And what are we thinking? How about $2,500 on that car? $2,500 on that car. 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 $2,500 on
$650. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10. What's the difference? 175 you know, bucks, 54 and a 54. Yeah, 30, older. 34? The park light no. on 54 is underneath the headlight. Oh, no, no, no. Tie down tailgates. No. There's no uh, different on the tailgates? Yeah, tailgates are like 42 What's takes that set of fenders right there. We got the top back there. That's or the another first fender one, right there. Take yep. a pick of the two. The 54 is. Take the pick of the two there. Give me 187. Give me 50 bucks. 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 Give me Choice just tailgates. You can make a sled out of it. Hey, I'm gonna give a choice here on the tailgates. Give a hundred, hundred dollar down, hundred, fifty bucks, sixty. And then you show them like a ninety-nine dollar six Chevy tailgate. Like, no, no, I want an old one. Fifty bucks straight down. Number is buyer number three. Would you like them all? Take that blue. Pick one. Next choice. Two hundred here. Hundred. Let's go. Hundred dollar down, hundred, hundred dollar down, hundred. I thought it was at like fifty. I got two of them. Hey, I'm gonna give a choice here. How much choice here? Now give a hundred, hundred dollar down, hundred, hundred dollar down, hundred. Give it a quarter. Are you sure? Two twenty-five. So it is 200 bucks, number 61, you want them both? We got the peach colored one left. So give a hundred dollars there, hundred, hundred another down, hundred. So it is the same way, hundred twenty-five dollars, number 61. Turn in the corner, let's go ahead, cash, and pull ahead. 75, 75, 75. So it is 550 bucks. 34. What's the table? Thanks. <laughs> the seats? The seats are gone. Next choice, next choice, 200 here, hey give two, 200 dollar down, two, 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 give a hundred dollar bill, 40, 35, then I'm in, uh, 40, give 40, so which way, 35 bucks, number one, door panels, Okay. what's that, two times, two times, the door panels, yep, door panels are all gone, well they're wrapping up here, so we better get loaded up. Here's what we got, a rough left hand 55 Chevy Fender, need that for my two door sedan to fill a hole. A couple of not so bad 47 to 53 pickup rear fenders. Some Ford F100 hubcaps or Crown Vic. Whatever. I got the Pontiac dog dishes. A pair of 55 Chevy two door doors. I got a 59 Chevy Impala steering wheel, a 55 Chevy car wheel. And what else we got? Oh, yeah, a coupe. About a 48 Chevy coupe because I couldn't go home empty. And uh, my winch is missing the hook when I got here, so we need to fix that. Hopefully these guys can get us loaded without a winch, but it's missing the hook, and uh, this car's missing a left front hub. It's right on the spindle, so getting loaded, we're gonna need some help. But they got a skid steer here. Hopefully we can figure it out. We need some bumpers for the car, but it's not a bad car. Not what I came to buy, but it's just too good of a car. Oh, there's the hub right there. Hopefully we can get that on when we get home and get a wheel on it. Got a nice steering wheel. Look, it's got a headliner in it. Visor. It's got a couple of whiskey dents in the fenders. You can see it must have been sitting in a building with tires against it. But uh, other than some, the splash aprons and the bumpers and some taillight lenses, She's pretty much all there. I think that trim is in the car. There's the wheel in the car. Yeah, some assembly required. We have to do a little work tying it down. I'm thinking the hood was sitting in the ground standing up. The hood needs a little love too, but I'm not gonna do a wheel at run because half of the six cylinders missing. Hopefully we can fit all this in the box of the pickup so we don't have to try tying it down in the car. That visor is not in good shape, but it's black and it's a coupe. So, guess we're gonna take it. Now the fun part, getting loaded up. This is gonna take a while. Oh. <laughs> now, well, there's gonna be bumper stickers all around for Boner Hong Kong to say, make OTPHJ oh, great again. <laughs>
So we just got this 48 Chevy coupe home. And as you can see, not only does it have flat tires, which I despise for moving things around, but it's also missing a hub. So we gotta get this thing rolling, so we gotta get a hub on it. I found the hub in the car, but I can't find the bearing, so I'm gonna do a little bit of searching. And if I can't find it, I think I got a Tri-5 Chevy frame outside that's maybe got a hub on it. We'll see if we can't get that hub to fit on there. I don't know if the bearings are the same, but we're gonna see if we can't figure it out because we gotta get this thing rolling. At least they left us the spindle nut, so we got that going for us. This thing should have ball bearings, not needle bearings. They're super expensive. I doubt I'm gonna have any laying around, but we're gonna dig through our stash. Oh, she's bounced up on some gravel roads. The old cab mount's a little cracked out there. The hub I found in the car is a five lug, which is fine. We got wheels for those, but there's no bearings. So I dug through my Buick stash. This is the one that I smoked the wheel bearing in my dad's Buick. So we got no outer bearing, but we got an inner bearing. It seems like it's pretty close. Good enough for the girls we go with. It'll get it off the trailer. Right, Duff? Yeah. He's like, we ain't going for riding that thing. Not a chance. Let's get a wheel on it and one that holds air over in that corner. Get this thing off my stinking trailer so we can go haul some more junk. Tech tip of the day, don't let your winch hook drag on the ground and show up at an auction sale and it's no longer there. But uh, the old cowboys down there in Delmont, South Dakota tied me a nice loop. Pulled this thing on, no problem. Might be stuck. Might be stuck. Well, it'll be easy to get loose though. Oh yeah. Right there, Duff. You don't think it's gonna run either, Duff? <laughs> yeah, there's hardly any ridge on them cylinders though. Where at all? Wonder why they took the head off. See, well, it's underneath, I suppose. Just look at you. <laughs> so analytical. You gonna tell us why the chicken crossed the road too? Yeah. To get to the other side. Yeah. You got an engine laying around for it? Not really. What do you think, Duff? <laughs> you know what? Should have took you with. You'd have told me not to buy it. What's that? A welding rod? Yep. Yep. You must have been gonna fix that cracked exhaust by the fold. Never seen that where they got where the starter button. When you push it down, it pushes on the gas just a little bit. Built right into it. I'm gonna take a break from the regular video. Do a little body work. We noticed the radiator was off close to the fan on the roll back here, so we got a new radiator and the core supports pushed in. Which is why the hood didn't latch and we had to put a different hood and the grill was busted. So we're gonna put the old trailer up to it that doesn't have a hook anymore. And uh so we can't pull her out. Back of the trailer down a little bit. Yeah, just a score. It ain't gonna take much. Go on. Yeah, just go right against that bumper. That'll yeah. be fine. Okay. That bumper's junk anyway. I lost my uh, hook the other day. Uh oh. Yeah. So, a clevis. We got a clevis laying there on there? You want to run that winch? Okay, I'll let it out. I don't think it had to go very far, do you? No, about an inch. Well, maybe come take a look, I don't know, hard to say. But yeah, it ain't touching the bumper, it ain't touching the trailer anymore. Might have to tap on that a little bit. But... That'll work. That'll work. A little body by Mojo. And she's ready to accept a new radiator. You can see how close the old one was. How it leaked, I don't know. The old fan clutch rubbed on her a few times. Give you a good deal on radiator, Mojo. Yeah, that's what I need. Duff says enough diddling around. Let's rip into this thing. All right, somebody was taking this engine out disassembling it i don't know what they were doing but they also took the brake hoses off wheel cylinders are off and then look at this they got like a spindle with a i don't know kingpin in it 
It's got these upper control arms and the sh hydraulic shock is built right into the uh, control arm mount. How about that duff, huh? So I'm sure all that stuff is worn out. The steering is just a box connected to the steering shaft so you can't change it real easy. And then I don't know if I can show it here, but there's like a big wishbone right down there attached to the end of the steering box. So instead of having a drag link, it all just, it's got a tie rod end going each way. So I got experience with those and they're not good. You can't work on them. It's hard to find parts. It's hard to find people that'll work on them, yada, yada, yada. So if I was gonna do something with this, I'd either graft a frame on the front like a Camaro or you can buy a Mustang kit. So that would be the way to go to get rid of all this stuff. Cause even if you get it going and you lower it, well, the odds are this shock that's 70 years old, 75, right Mojo, is gonna be shot. And we still gotta find a hub and bearings and all that. But for now, I think we're just gonna go through the car, see if we can find any more parts and piece it all back together. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab a trash can, maybe two, and fill them up. What's going on, dog? And Duff, <laughs> look at this thing. Last tag, that's a 63 tag and that must be a 64. The beef state. Nebraska. Oh man, you could change that F into an R and make the beer state. To heck with Wisconsin. What's in there, Duff? We got a whole bunch of uh, lug nuts and uh, wheel studs for big truck. I feel like we should probably recycle that stuff. Ooh, we got one. I thought those would be glass. Tail light lens. Oh, conveniently we need one. Just kidding, we need two. It's a swimmy swami. Stimsonite, I was way off. So no swim, swami, sl slippy, slappy, Samsonite. I was way off. We're gonna recycle this scrap iron. Duff, you're in the way. 216 head bolts. Oh. Generator mount, better save that. You need a, a water heater for your tank to feed your dog water. It's a, it's a Hudson, HD Hudson Manufacturing Company. Chicago, Illinois. It's, oh my God, you gotta see that. It's electric. It's electric. In Illinois, they're like, they can't even say electric. They just call it electric. It's a, it's a silent heat. It's the electric heat. It's the Model A, 1,000 watts. I suppose we're missing the headlights. We probably better save a couple of, ooh, it's a T3. Both are. All of them are? This one says Ford in the middle. FOMOCO. I didn't know they made a FOMOCO script headlight. I'm guessing that's some type of inner fender we might need. Bent up beauty ring, headlight ring, fan, we're always saving them. Shift linkage, save that. Push rod. This is why they parked it. Flexi hose kills you every time. Headlights are on. We might have to. We might have to straighten it out and save it. Ooh, spring is just around the corner. Tire chains. We might get our money back in scrap iron. Oh, generator bracket. Better save that. That's how you prevent yourself from getting the Hanta virus. You just dig right into it and make yourself immune. Monkey wrench. Better say that, I don't know. Napa! Get the good stuff. Something about Napa jobbers are a good man to know. Oh, it was a bag! It was a bag, yeah. It was. Now it's garbage. Fast tense. What do you think, Duff? How's the floor in there? Pretty good? Yeah? Super solid. Even the divider between like the trunk and the seat, it's cardboard. It's still there. Well, see you later. Oh, big gulps, huh? All right. Well, see you later. Big gulps. Just kidding. 
Okay, don't eat it, please. We'll get that clean out of there. Let's see what's in the cab. How did they get all these bumpers in here? Very careful. Might have to tag team it. Can you do that again? I'm your 435 point, Mike. Can you do that again? What is it? Is like, what is winking? Does that, is that acquired with age or have you always known how to wink? I've always known how to wink. Have you? Oh, yeah. Well, like everybody can wink, but like some people look like, you know, they're special doing it. But like creepy old man, it just comes naturally. <laughs> Let's get a treat, though. <laughs> you knew why you're here. It's a practice. Oh, it's a book. This is Rocky? Carl? Rocky, wasn't that your old banker? What's the back say? Cornflakes! Cornflakes. Oh, oh, be a love letter. Well, it's Annie. We Go to Mass by Reverend Joseph P. Hederman. Oh, they just, oh, they just made a new Annie, Annie Cook? switch but it's got a solid thunk when you flip it too oh, oh yeah <laughs> remember the old light switches my aunt and uncle at house that had the two buttons yeah you pushed one and the other one popped out and you pushed the bottom one my folks had them in their house i'm sure that house is actually still standing in hamburg actually <laughs> knob and most knob and tube houses aren't standing Not right walt shift. oh be a oh it's schlitz the beer that made Milwaukee famous. Are these church, they call these a church key or the, are they the rounded ones with the bottle openers? I don't know. I don't know. Well, they called one of them a church key. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, since we found those, that prayer book in here, it probably was a church key. Found the handle for the three speed shifter. We need some JB Weld though. Well, I found three of the four hood bolts. They got this, I think they're like a 516 bolt with a 5 ace head on it, and then they got that shoulder and that rides on your hood hinge. GM was notorious for these. Look at how nice this interior is. If you think this is bad, you should look in most of the 75 year old cars to have a headliner. Yes, it's got some mouse holes. Look at that, they even got like wood grain on the uh, window trim. I wonder what this lever was for. Oh, I bet these windows don't go up and down. So that lever was for to. Oh, no way. Come slide on the window or do something with the window. Like nothing. Oh, yeah, they go back. We're coming out of the front. Yeah. What? <laughs> That's awesome. The, the handle is pretty sweet too. Well, that's why I was trying to figure it out, and I was like, "Oh, it's not for the windows, because but then there's no crank. It's so the kids can smoke in the back. They can flick the their the they flick. Like, is back there. So well, yeah, but you could you could flick it out the windows too. Oh, well, the paint's all speckled. Yeah, childproof. Duff's like, I can't stick my head out that. I don't want nothing to do with that. Yeah, it's still got carpet. I think they just took the seat backs loose so they could stuff more crap in here. Look at how nice the clock is. And then you can see uh, you can adjust the clock towards F and S, fast and slow. Radio is missing, ashtrays up here. Oh, maybe that wasn't the shift knob, it's got it on there. Horn rings busted, it should go all the way around. Yeah, visors are both there. Glove box is still in it. It's got the old super deluxe GM heater. She's loaded. You don't like that window or what, Duff? Found a few goodies in there. I think we showed you most of those. I don't know what this is for. But then look at this. Tri-5 two-door rear window garnishings. That one's got a little hooey in it, but easy enough to fix. DD Speed Shop? What in the heck? This is junk. Ugh, honestly, it's like embarrassing. DD Smooth Shop. DD Hack Shop. And then these window garnishings, I think the fronts would fit this car. But the rears must be for a two-door sedan. And there's extra kick panels. 
Uh, some headlight rings. I don't think they're for this car. I think there's a whole set of door panels. So I think this is all two door sedan stuff. Like there was at the sale. Hey, there's another one of them sheets. What are they for, Duff? They're for the bottoms of these door panels. Hey, those Tri-5 door panels? Come fish them out of the pile. My hands are busy. People want to see you as a hand model. Bob's busy over there consuming, <laughs> consuming adult beverages. These are the rear door, or the rear whatever door panels, I guess, even though there's no door with the ashtrays in them. So those are spares, but those are for a coupe, it looks like. Yeah, but those are for a coupe too as well. The seat would sit over that enclosed area. Yep. And those would be the front doors for that whatever. Well, what does that say? 47 Chev left front two door left front door See these are try five I bet Yeah Right, I don't know The uh, well, there are two oh, different patterns. A, yeah, there's a dip there. So must be there's a dip right there uh -huh. This one matches that one that looks like a oh So that's where that trim. That's why I was looking trying to figure out where that trim come from No, these are these are the same so you got the same as that one yeah, but this one's it's just a different trim package. That one's got a dip though. This one don't. So I don't know if it's. Oh, maybe certain years didn't have that dip there. Did 55s not have that dip? We'll have to call up the expert. DD Hack Shop. And then I'm guessing this is another 47 front. It's a nice pile of crap you got there. Hornwork stuff. You just had to get them all wound up, Mojo. He's like. He's like, how can I screw with those guys filming up there? Oh, I'll make the dog bark and then it won't be my fault. <laughs> and then we got multiple of these trims that go on the rocker and none of them are very great shape, unfortunately. Seat backs are there. They just took them off. I think to crab more crap in there. Looks like we got two of the trims that go over the radiator, not a single radiator. This is the front splash apron. I didn't see a rear one and only one bumper. Dang it. Oh, that must be the rear bumper. And it's got the splash apron. We're missing a front bumper. And this is a header panel out of something else. Oh yeah, and then there's that rocker stainless. Here's a couple more rocker stainlesses. Yeah, this one is trashed. So I guess we'll just have to start piecing it together and see what we're missing. Oh yeah, spare visor. I don't know what this is for. I don't think it's for this car though. And the visor, speaking of visor, she's got a Fulton, the Fulton Sunshield Company, Milwaukee, USA. Oh, it's missing the wipers too. Dang it. One crack in the glass, not bad. I know it's against your beliefs, but we're gonna clean this trunk out, Duff. And we'll clean out the inside. And I don't know how to make this entertaining, so uh, we're probably just gonna play some pudding pressure washing music and we'll just call us the king of vacuum cleaning. I'm not gonna dance. Because I didn't uh, spend my entire uh, middle school and high school career learning how to dance. So we'll just put some of that good old uh, Puddin's Fab Shop music in the background. Maybe have him do some dancing and pressure washing while I do some sucking. Because this job really sucks. Dad jokes. Mm, so good. Comment down below your favorite dad joke while I vacuum away. <laughs> Maybe I can do a beat box. Yeah, just getting too old to learn how to do that too. This little light of mine. I'm gonna put some earplugs in. Look at these used guys. Mm. That'll be fine. Bored you right to sleep, huh? I tell you what, as uh, unexciting as sucking mouse turds is out of a trunk, I was pretty excited to do it. Cause I cannot believe how nice this thing is. Let's jump in there. Let me show you now that I got it cleaned out. So, all right, before we jump in there, I got the story on this car. 
I think it's the Larry Sherman estate we got this thing at. And Larry was a, a body guy, rest in peace. He died like 2022, 20, and I think he was like 81 years old. But anyway, uh, he'd been in the body business for eternity. And he would take Blem Fenders home and projects and did his own projects, so on and so forth. I'm guessing he brought this car home and took the fenders off and was gonna start. And I'm betting he heard about this car, so a customer or was fixing it for somebody or somebody called him or he's at a garage. So anyway, he ended up with this thing and I'm guessing he either took it apart, previous person, and it sat in a building in Yankton, South Dakota, his son-in-law said. He said that car was covered in so much stuff we didn't even know there was a car in there. And I tripped on it and then I was like, hey, there's a car there. And you can actually see on the trunk, well, it's probably easier to see when it's down, but right there, there's a ring where a tire was sitting on it, and there's another ring right there. And this is authentic barn dust. So at the auction, I was wondering, I was like, why are there all these fenders and hoods and tailgates and bumpers, and there's no drivetrains? It just was, was weird to me. And so that's what makes sense. He was a body guy, and he would take these blem fenders home and, and stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, this thing was in a building. You could tell by the dust that was on it, and there wasn't any buildings in the yard, so I, I kind of figured it came from a different site. This thing was like caked. You saw me scrape that dirt, dust, clay, whatever you want to call it out of there with the old uh, Craftsman scraper. That These are all these Craftsman scrapers, these big flat bladed scrapers are good for unless you need a big screwdriver. If you want to do some scraping, the holidays are right around the corner. Get yourself the super scraper, the SS1. This thing is the best all around scraper. Get yours at Mortski.com. And if you're into motorcycles and small engines, get yourself an SS5 or a SS5 short. These are good for small stuff. Lifetime guarantee on these things. Made in America. We got them in stock right now, but get them because they're flying out the shelves last week. We just got a shipment in and announced it and you guys are killing it buying these things. But anyway, this stuff, what I was getting at is, is that dirt was caked in here that thick and you knew it was in a building that was dry because otherwise this trunk floor would be gone if it was in a humid climate. But look at this. Like I said before, they always rust right here, and I know why now. This whole trunk pan drops down to there, and that is the lowest spot, and it's also a body mount. But like those pinholes right there, that is the only rust in this trunk. And you can see it all drops down there, and it seams between the trunk and this tail pan or rear quarter, and it's still full of the glue schmoo. DD Speed Shop sealant from the factory. Like I said, that is the only rust in this floor. Ah, this side's got it too. I couldn't see it before. A little bit of rust around the body mount. Not bad. I'm not even going to worry about it. Like I said, look at how dry this is. Even nice done cars, when they fix that, they don't put schmoo in there, DD Speed Shop style, and uh, seal those things up. So nice painted cars will rust out there, especially if you don't have that stainless on there, which a lot of guys get rid of. So yeah, this trunk floor, I'm pretty excited. And I don't get excited about much, but I'm guessing the front's gonna be the same. We almost gotta put it on the lift to see the bottom. Cause I'm not taking this carpet out. I'm gonna vacuum it. Maybe we'll take it outside and blow it off. It would really be good to pressure wash this now, the back there. We'll see how the front is. You don't wanna get that carpet wet. And I feel like if you take this carpet out, it's gonna just poof, turn to dust. It should probably go away, but I don't ever get a car that's got like decent carpet in it, especially one that's 75 years old. So we're gonna try to keep it as good as we can because we don't do interior around here. And uh, the more you tear, that's what killed this car was somebody tearing into it, just getting in over their head. This car should have just been, they should have fixed the engine or whatever was wrong with it and just kept rolling with it. Threw some new tires, new brakes, fix whatever. But you no, know, they tore the engine apart, they tore the brakes apart. They tore the electrical apart, they tore the body apart, they tore the interior apart. It's like, no, just just Johnny Cash it, one piece at a time. Uh, you, you can eat a whole whale if you take one bite at a time, something like that, just, just a little bit here and there. Pick away at your projects. Don't tear them apart. That is the death of all these projects. This car, torn apart. That thing was in the weeds. Well, yeah, I tore it apart. Then never got back on the road. That car, was all torn apart. That car we got was all torn apart. That pickup was just never finished. That thing was all torn apart. This thing needs finished. So I mean, that is the death of all projects. If you think about it, I'm, I'm just gonna preach a little bit here. Preach my brother. If you think about all the projects you see on Facebook Marketplace, somebody tore into it and got over their head. And you can maybe pick those things up for reasonable, 
Some of them, you know, especially like, I see a million Chevelles lately in, in Mopar muscle cars. I want to get a Cuda or a Challenger or a Charger or something like that. Or a Roadrunner, a Satellite, whatever. But they're all the ones you find are complete basket cases or they're a million dollars. But you find so many of these cars that are, would probably be affordable, but they're still in a million pieces and they're all blown apart and none of the pieces, like interiors are missing. Like that's thousands and thousands of dollars to redo one. Much less if you don't have it, you're gonna pay big money for seats and then you don't know what hardware you're missing and all that. So just stay away from those projects and don't be that guy, don't tear it all apart. Keep her all together is what I'm saying. All right, rant over. Think about it, projects. There's a million of them sitting around. There's a million of them for sale just because guys got in way over their head. Just little things. All right, let's do a little thing like vacuuming this thing out. Go vacuum out your project that's in the garage or give it a wash job, you know? Feel good about what you've done. Or at least take the tires off or the pool table or the kids' bikes or the lawnmower or whatever you got stored on top of it. Go admire it, have a sandwich. I'm gonna need one after all this sucking. God, that's gonna sound terrible. That's what we do, terrible things. Well, the odds of match from 1964 lights one of the odds we burn this car down with it. Nope. You were right. No go. Hey, there's part of the horn ring. Here, I think we found our fourth shoulder bolt for the hood. Score. A lot of razor blades in here. No mirrors though. And one 12 inch ruler. And several mouse carcasses. My, what big teeth you have. <laughs> Another church key. This one's a Pabst Blue Ribbon, though. And it's got the bottle opener on the one end. There's a 22 shell, too, but I can't find that anymore. Well, oh, there it is. So this guy liked to have some fun. This thing is really good. The carpet's the floor mat's gonna turn to dust if we mess around with it much. I don't know if you guys can read it, but right there it says 48. So she's a 48 floor mat. Dimmer switch over there, push button starter over there. I don't know what's going on over here, but there's a Folgers can lid screwed over the uh, inner fender there. So I don't know what that's for. But yeah, super dry back here. Just surface rust is all. This thing is good. All right, clean up the seats. Set her all back together. Oh yeah, there was a number two pencil back there. Pedigree by Empire. Looks like the old Mises chewed on the eraser a bit. And one interesting thing we did find a registration, but of course the Mises ate the good part. Looks like it was a Nebraska $8 fee. $1.44 in tax, and it's actually said four-door coupe, but no name, no year on it, unfortunately. Well, there it is, Nebraska registration, 1965, Hardington, Nebraska. I really wish we could add a 
name of the individual who had this thing last. She needs a little detail work, but look at how good this thing turned out. Not bad, not bad at all. Pretty excited. All right, no more throwing parts in here. Got her all cleaned up. The old body by Fisher tag. And the sill plate on the driver's side says Chevrolet. It's probably on the other side, but the other side saw a little bit more moisture. My uncle had a fleet line. That's how I know all about steering on these. And he would light you up if you stepped on those sill plates. That and the 40 Chev convertible. You had to step over them as a kid. And that's where I got it from. Oh. Is there a date on this? 66,000. 5.3 is 63. We can't see how many miles because we're missing a Speedo. Wyatt Oil Company, thanks. Anyway, May 3rd of 63 was probably the last oil change at the Sinclair dealer. All right, moving on to the front. I think first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get that intake manifold and carburetor out of the way because it's just kind of hanging out in there and we'll take the carburetor out that intake manifold and put that in our stash for a rainy day. I think it's a, a Carter W1. Rochester W1? It's definitely a Carter carburetor, but I think they call them a W1. <laughs> yeah, there it is. W1 cast right in the side. But we'll hang out of that for a rainy day. And then it won't be just flopping around. And I think I'm going to cut all these wires off because nobody in their right mind is going to reuse these things. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of people. Not on their right mind, so somebody might reuse them. Look at this, they even left the capillary tube intact for the temp gauge. That's a good deal. The wild thing about these 47 H Chevys is they got a hood pop inside of the car. It's a cable that runs all the way ahead, just like your late models, but the cable seized. The cable's there, so we're not gonna really have a hood latch because I don't want somebody to close the hood 
And we got no way of getting it back open other than tearing that all apart. And this was death by a million screws. There's 468 pieces of hardware holding this front clip on. And we put about 45 of them in. So 10%. Way overkill. And uh, this was a giant pain, especially when you're not familiar with these cars and the different types of hardware you use and where the hardware goes and the process of putting it together. It was uh, a whole lot of not fun. Put the FU in fun. And this is the worst part about the car. They had the hood standing on end, must have been, sitting in the dirt. And so uh, she's pretty crusty on this side. Other side isn't as bad. Fenders were the same way. A little rust on that one. I forgot to show you guys this. Somebody put these neat little chrome beacons on there. They're the crown and HM. So I don't know if that was his initials or Harriet and Margaret or what? Harry and Margaret, who knows? But both sides got it. Must have been a little GC Whitney trinket. But yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, all we really got left is uh, that radiator sport cover and inner fender. Those are extras. Uh, that rocker stainless. I don't believe that panels for this car. It looks like it's, a, it's the bottom of the trunk and where the license plate goes, I'm guessing. And there's a fuel filler and a license plate light. And then the rear bumper here. So, yeah, we're running out of pieces. We're missing the front bumper from for this and the brackets, but she's uh, looking pretty good. Hood springs, one of them was broke, and the other side wasn't, so we can't put one on. And plus, these things are a real pain. They're a death wish. You got to stretch them out. And yeah, I remember pulling the hood off that fleet line. And, uh, Figuring that you weren't gonna have all your teeth when you're done. Yeah, you can see this side isn't as bad, but she's still. We need a hood. Oh yeah, it does have the Fleet Master badging. That's about all the badging these things had, short of what they got on the grill there. What do you think, Duff? Go for a ride? You know better. This thing ain't gonna run. I always wondered what this cover was for. I found another cover in there. It's for that. But, you know, the radiator cap was up here, so I wasn't sure if you took that off in the summer for better cooling or what. Comment down below if you know what that circular cover is for on these things. If you take it off, it looks just like that. And also, the only difference between a 47 or 48 that I'm aware of is this little spear here down the center. You can pretty much take that off and make this car into a 47. And then 46 has had like a little mustache around the grill that the uh, 47s and 8s don't have. And I'm sure there's a few other things. Let's take a look at the bottom side of this thing. She's got a factory sway bar. So I think that was about the time these things were implemented. And like I said, there's that silly steering pitman arm to double tie rod ends. And then there's a rubble, rubble, Barney rubble. But anyway, that rubber goes bad in this isolator, and yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's not a great design, and it's cast iron control arms, and there's a stamp steel insert between them. Yeah, kind of a crazy design, I guess. I don't know what happened here. I don't know if that was when they were shoving it around or what, but I think that's a splash band that should go up here around the engine. This side's got it too. I don't know. Master cylinders down here under the floor. Pretty typical of cars of the that day. Look at this tiny little three speed, barely bigger than my hand. And I don't know. Somebody was on had the torque tube unhooked, so they were probably pulling this engine out. Or maybe the rear end was out. We may never know. No exhaust. I wonder if they weren't pulling the rear end out because they got the uh, shock mounts unhooked. A lot of times these will be unhooked when the shocks are no good, but these actually cycle up and down, which is pretty crazy. You can hear the hydraulics inside of that thing. Uh, parallel leaf rear, like I said, enclosed drive shaft, torque tube, whatever you want to call it. Nobody's cut the uh, park brakes yet. They took the wheel cylinder off that side. But they left it on that side and also the fuel tank was taken out but they took it out nicely there's the 
setting unit wire and there's the uh, fuel line so we don't know what they were doing but look at how great that floor is for the trunk and then even the rest of the car i mean it's just solid undercoating even the bottoms of the rockers and the inner rockers cab supports all that stuff is just absolutely rock solid i mean it's full of dirt that's how dry of a climate it was stored in could use a good pressure washing and maybe some uh patina sauce pour 15 something or other to clean her up yeah all right let's get that rear bumper on get her on the ground we got the old coupe rolled back here into the wash bay now we're gonna wash it all up <laughs> mojo you gonna wash this car oh one thing to note you can tell when it's a barn find not by just by the tires sitting in there but they must have had a roll of carpet sitting up this looks like carpet insulation or some type of insulation what i'm saying is it's not a true barn find if there, is if there isn't crap sitting on top because nobody puts a car in a building and then never stack stuff on it. especially if it's a pickup the bed is full of crap or a truck flatbed whatever even cars people set stuff on the roofs the hoods the trunks fill the inside lean rakes and shovels against the side anyway yeah guess what we rolled that back here with what a freaking roll back we got a few bugs to work out but She's uh, earning her keep for uh, white lightning with a wiped out bedside. $1,800 is what American Family is saying it's worth. So now we got to go take it to a professional to see if they can fix that bedside for $1,800. I have my doubts, but they got a check in the mail. So American Family, not bad to deal with, I guess. But what we're doing now is we're gonna put a mezzanine in the corner here. We got that mezzanine up there. We're gonna bring it all the way to the end of this concrete wall. And I got all the lumber. I got a sweet deal on the Facebook Marketplace. We're gonna run it all the way out to here because it's kind of, we utilize this space, but it's kind of a catch-all. But if we can put two levels, then we can put twice as much crap in this corner and uh, pretty much double the square, well, not double, but add 30 percent to our mezzanine space which we utilize quite well i go up there i don't know six times a day to get stuff so we're gonna roll this all out of the way and then we're gonna start building the mezzanine we're probably gonna have to take some stuff off the wall here i'm undetermined if we got to strip the tin off that wall or how we're gonna do it because i'm not a carpenter but some of this stuff's on wheels that maybe we can build around we might have to move it i don't know but we're gonna bring my enclosed trailer and we're gonna throw all that stuff in there. All this stuff's gotta get hung up. Look at all these grills. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 grills we gotta hang up at least. And then I kinda wanna hang some of that other stuff up too. Maybe a magnesium wheel or in and out box or a quick change, but anyway, keep your stuff on wheels, tech tip of the day, and be organized. Right, Mojo? Right. Keep a clean shop and keep it organized. I don't want nobody stepping on that oil. Over there, that pink man, I found a couple of shelves on the arrowhead. You just practicing your dance moves like that pudding down in Pot County. <laughs> yeah. So, my plan is to back the enclosed trailer in here. Mojo, Mr. Retired CDL driver, says he's gonna sit back and watch. He don't think I can get it. How many, how many attempts do you think it's gonna take? Only get one I only get one chance? And then you, you think you can get it in one shot? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Right. We're gonna lift our wildfire lift up out of the way and then bring everything underneath it so we're not tripping over it, but. The D100 that was on here, yes, we'll make a video. The uh, Bluezer is probably gonna be outside for the winter. And uh, yeah, so you Mopar guys, stay tuned. How about that there, buddy? One shot. Want me to drive it out and you can have a crack at it? Uh, compared to you. All right. 
Man, I can't dance like Mojo, but I can back a enclosed trailer up like a mother trucker. Wait, what about a 53 foot reefer? Yeah. Like we just talked, them big trailers are easier to back up than the snowmobile and boat trailers. <laughs> big trucker talk. In a dark hole? You gotta put, a, put some hair on it, right? go I'm just gonna move this big hulking beast I suppose I'll have to take that bedside down that I hung up and then of course we might have to do something with our plumbing over here and then they ran the bathroom exhaust vent which is all the way over there over here and out the side of the wall instead of going out the north wall where it should be so we got to fix that too Awesome. Nothing can ever be easy. Well, I didn't film it, but it's because Mojo did it. Pressure wash this thing while I was out running some errands. And yeah, it looks pretty good. You can see where something must have rubbed up against it. It's got a little luster left in that paint. He even uh, plugged off the fuel filler neck and I said, Mojo, there's no gas tank in it. He's like, oh, okay. But yeah. I know pressure washer did a pretty good job. A little hooey in the hood there, but we already know we need a hood. She's pretty good looking old coupe, huh, Duff? Yeah, we got a mess in the shop. And we're doing a little plumbing. We're doing a little carpentry. We might get into some electrical. Get yourself your stolen from Mortski Repair Bic Pen at Mortski.com. We're even actually using a speed square for carpentry things, unlike Puddin' where he uses his for, I don't know what he does, fabrication stuff. We got our base plates ready and our top plates ready and now we're ready to cut some studs. And so what I'm doing here is I'm building another stub two by six wall to set all my two by 12s on. Those are two by 10s on that side and they're 16 inches on center. We're having two by 12s on this side and we're gonna go one foot on center because more is better and I got enough material. So I don't know if you remember, but I got all this material off Facebook Marketplace. A lot of it, all the two by 12, somebody else had a mezzanine built and it was not a very good design, but it has, has a good base. So we're building a better base, better legs, better uprights, whatever. And a lot of the two by sixes came from, we tore down the museum. And so we took on, saved a bunch of those, pounded the nails out and yeah, we're gonna use those. So it should be great. I'm not much for nailing stuff, so I'm gonna screw the snot out of this. So yeah, figured I'd give you an update. Oh yeah, we did a little plumbing. We, we undid the fart fan and undid the copper and got some pecs in there and that's just temporary until we uh, get everything figured out. And then we're gonna, it's gonna be pecs, but we'll clean it up a little bit, maybe. That little four foot wall up there, three foot wall's gotta come down once we get everything in place. But yeah, I'm gonna build a wall quick. Just kidding, I'm a hack carpenter. So nothing to be quick about it. I would hate to even know how many hours I am into this already. And I feel like we're not making any progress. 
but she's gonna be strong until we screw something up and then it's not. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat. I talked to a, a bunch of my buddies and one guy says do it this way and another guy do, says do it that way. And there's a lot of right ways. There's even more wrong ways. So hopefully we pick a right way. All right, I'm gonna crack a wibby and uh, start cutting some 90 and 3 8 inch studs. Oh, I just, I see I need like 11 of them and we got like five on the trailer. So I'm gonna go out in the dark. Try to find six more. Might as well get seven. But yeah, here's all our two by twelves. And that's what that guy had for uprights, these six by six green treats. I think we'll use those on the one end. But he just had it resting on a bolt in uh I guess it was in double shear. But yeah, we don't like that. Do we duff? Yeah. Well, we're making a mess. So that means progress. We got a wall built. Didn't take too long, actually. Let's see if it fits. Need some uh, lifting juice here. Wibby is our sandwich sponsor this week. I shouldn't say sponsor, more uh, sandwich of choice. Because we just got a shipment in. Ah, it's so good when it hits the lips. Oh, once it hits your lips, it's so good. All right, let's do this. I'm sure this isn't heavy. Oh. This is a bad idea. Don't put your fingers under there. Oh, big, big carpenter guy here. Oh, the steps are in the way. Go ahead and set up a chiropractor appointment for Monday. Oh, come on. Oh no. It's gonna hit that, isn't it? Son of a... Built it to clear that. What's your problem? Oh. Come on, meow. All right, meow. Get her up there. Get her up. Duff. You don't even need thumbs for this. Come on now. Yes! We well, gotta do a little adjusting and aligning and we can screw that thing up there. Too fat and old for this. I wish you could just be like putting and just write a check and have somebody come put us up a new mezzanine and a new shop, paint the inside, pour us a bunch of concrete. But nope, we're just pleasing Greta, reusing material from somebody else's mezzanine and a building that came down from the snow last year and doing it on a budget. Not opening the checkbook. All right, I don't know when I'll see you again because I don't know what I'm gonna do next. Next, I gotta build the wall for the other end and that's gonna be different. We got some big old laminate header panel, something's or other, and that's gonna require skid steer and probably daylight and probably kicking that car out of that stall. Maybe. I'm feeling like I'm not, that's gonna be a two person job. I'm dumb though. I'll do it by myself. All right, I'll probably see you tomorrow, which is Turkey Day, which I'm gonna be working on because gotta get a video out for every week, otherwise people jump us. Hey, where's our video Monday? Sorry, holiday. All right, see you in the morning. You're napping Duff. It ain't even turkey time yet. Well, it is one o'clock, so we probably should go have turkey. Just kidding, the old man's uh, coming over and cooking me ribeyes, and we're gonna put him to work. It's turkey day here, so I figured, let's do ramp truck things, roll back things. Got these uh, laminate boards, this was like, I don't know, 32 feet long, had to cut it down to uh, 177 and three quarter. Like you cared, now we gotta cut these off at 90 and an eighth, no, 89 and five eighths. And uh, that's gonna be our base. So, this should be fun. 
six by six treated. I don't know how we're gonna cut that with this saw, but we'll give her a whirl. Got the LVL cut to length. We got them doubled up. We got a two by six on the bottom to uh, beef it up, plus for the joist to sit on. And then we got these joist hangers as well. That's more or less just a guide to set them in place. Then that'll take up all the six by six. Beef it up a bit. We need all the beef we can get. We got our six by sixes cut down. What? You ready to eat lunch? Yeah, me too. Six by six cut down. Shout out to Wildfire, making a great uh, heavy duty light holder. Gonna rip down that uh, two by six. And yeah, we're ready to put her in place, but we got no help. Well, I got Duff, but. So I gotta take this electrical off because our post is gonna sit there. And I was wondering how I was gonna get that up there. That how can I get the skid steering? Uh, this is on wheels. We can move it out of the way. And I thought maybe I could move this in there and set it on that and lift it up with the uh, wildfire lift. But then I had the brilliant idea. There's this uh, rope rigging system here that was for lifting a water tank out of the pickup because when we used to have to haul water, the water tank was there. We'd have to grab the smaller tank and put it in the back of the pickup. And we used to hang it from that. So that thing is about in the right spot. So if we set our header panel right here, run a couple ropes down. Hopefully nobody dies. And we'll see if we can lift that by ourselves. There's one, two, three pulleys there. So what's that, double or triple our lifting capacity? I don't know. That stuff's gotta get out of the way anyway. So let's uh, let her down. And then I'm gonna clean up this mess. And I think I'll just back the roll back as far as I can. And maybe I can slide that LVL out here and lift her up. And then we just gotta set her posts and attach everything. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right Duff? ourselves in a little predicament it's way heavier than I can handle if we had two people three would be ideal is that sketchy or what Duff we can't go up any higher because oversight we're hitting our uh, clevis there should have went underneath the board so I kind of got it blocked at that uh, six by six on that end I'm gonna go ahead and take this hot rod and put underneath it to hold it up. It's really not that heavy. This railing should be fine. Everybody needs a freaking rollback. God, that's awesome. I mean, we might kill ourselves, but it should be great. Well, it didn't go so bad. Nobody died. Yeah, these lifts, they're handy. Anywho, I think we're gonna take a break. Huh? Go have a little pre-Thanksgiving snack. Dad's on his way to make some ribeyes. So I better get warmed up. But anyway, this is in a pretty good spot. We just gotta figure out how to tie it all together. Hopefully that rope holds up. If not, the lift is there. Really, we just need to set it on and fasten it and then uh, square it up. I'm not sure where that red iron ends up with the old uh, brick wall over here. So if anything, we're going to have to space that end out, I believe. But we'll do some measuring. All right, I'm going to go to snack. No, one, I'm not having sandwiches for Thanksgiving dinner. Well, I mean, it is 4 o'clock. So. Happy holidays, everybody, even though it's four days after the holiday for you now that you'll see this. Poppy, you ready to set some <coughs> Joyce? For you, Duff? Yeah. All right, got our first floor Joyce cut. 
Lift it up there, I'll watch. Yeah, right. I'll get it. That carpenter, that's, that manual labor is work. I can see why old Pudden hires all his done. All right, we were gonna end up out here, but due to some miscalculations, we're gonna be in there, which is actually better, because then we can put our, oh, I need to tighten that guy up. All right, temporary electrical. Back to, uh, hey, get your magnetic can koozie at Mortsky.com. I don't need one, because I'm gonna consume this very fast. Oh yeah. Anyway, yeah, I gotta run a couple more screws in and uh, we gotta take that little stub wall out up there and then we're about ready to start sheeting. Holy sheet, that was a lot of screws. That was a lot of lifting. And then uh, we gotta figure out a way to gusset this up, tie that all together. That shouldn't be too big a deal, especially over here we could just some two by sixes in there, right, Poppy? Oh man, he found all the cackle burrs. Do you drink beer? Probably not. What are we having for supper, ribeye? <coughs> ribeye and hash browns. Ribeyes and hash browns, look They're at this. Hash blacks, They're hash blacks. Look at that. Catered on Thanksgiving, what a deal. Is this a, a custom spatula holder? That's an accessory. Yes. Oh, it's an accessory. <laughs> Blackstone things. All right. I'm going to sit down and eat.
stuck around for a bit after Pops left last night and moved some stuff around, cut some boards to go in between the studs to brace it up a little bit better. I gotta figure out the gussets for the uh, LVL. I brought in the three quarter inch tongue and groove. Is it called plywood? Or is it called uh, particle board? Anyway, I blew my back out throwing these up here. We got a, oh, I cut one more floor joist. I wanna put one more up against that wall. So there's basically three sandwiched together. Right, right, shake my hand. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Yeah, we should go poppers. We gotta take the uh, stub wall down and move a couple of these signs. That's what I'm most excited about is we'll be able to uh, hang some stuff. We're gonna put a, a rail here, handrail, or maybe build some shelving that functions as a handrail. And who knows what we're gonna do. God, I just had a brilliant idea. We could just go over the top and enclose it all and then set stuff on top of that. But anyway, I think I'm gonna attach a two by 12 to the wall there. I measured about where my head hits and gave myself a little leeway and I can put a six foot two by 12 to the wall and then do some two by 12s, three feet wide. So that'll gain us 18 square feet. More of storage space and yeah, we'll be able to easy to get in our belts now. Yeah, yeah, I like the view. We got a good spot to take pictures of all the stuff that's collected. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, 16 by, you can do the math. It's, it's a lot more square footage. So uh, a couple tech tips. If you've got tall ceilings, like anything, even if you got eight foot, seven foot ceilings, put shelves up. It increases your usable floor space. And then, you know, if you've got 10 foot ceilings, put like a catwalk up there or, you know, a shelf, and then you put lights on it, you can improve your lighting. There's so many things you can do with storage to make your shot better. And the second tech of the day is, well, you can't really see it, but I swept up last night. Pick your stuff up, put it away. So you come into the shop the next day and you're all refreshed and it's nice and clean. That's just something I noticed. I like moving stuff around. So when people come over like, oh, you worked on that. It's like, nah, I just washed that car, moved it over here, shuffled that or stacked stuff higher. But yeah, uh, a couple tech tips. Improve your storage and organization and uh, keep your shop clean. Anyway, 48 Chevy Coupe uh, is available. Obviously no drivetrain, it's got a mismatch hub. Don't have a title for it. Uh, if we have it sit around here long enough, maybe we'll get a title for it and do some work on it. But uh, price and availability in the description. Somebody needs to own that thing before I get crazy and swap a Mustang two on it and uh, do a four link and bag it and LS it and everything else. Probably not. If I was gonna build that car today, it changes all the time. Today, I would do a, a carbureted small block with a turbo 350 or maybe a 700 R4 because I got one way in there. Depends on what I find for, I put an eight inch in the rear and what do I got for gears in eight inches? Most of them are like 270. So I would probably just put a turbo 350 in there for an eight inch rear, some lowering blocks, Mustang two front with power steering, new fuel tank, exhaust, rewire it, drive it as is knock a couple dents out you know find a front bumper find a speedo stuff like that i'd probably buy some aftermarket gauges that fit in there because i'm sure dakota digital or somebody makes something but anyway thank you very much for watching check out our other videos i have already bored duff to death uh get your merch it is cyber monday today so uh we might have a little uh cyber monday deal going on so go check it out at mortski.com we got one going today which is black friday 20 percent off Hopefully you took advantage of that while you could. And we'll probably do something for uh, Cyber Monday as well, seeing how this goes, if we got anything left. But Super Scrapers, you guys killed it. We sold all those things out. And like, by that afternoon, the SS ones were gone last Monday. I mean, yeah, matter of eight hours. If you want a scraper, you gotta be on the ball. When you see the video, click buy them because they go quick and they're hard to get because they're real good. Really nice. So anyway, enough of me rambling. I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, even if you don't celebrate it, like those people like DD Speed Shop up in Kanuckistan, he's so angry. He said his dogs are better than you. Can you believe that, Duff? Not a chance. This dog's name, one of them's name is Fra Frankie and Stevie. They're human names. That's terrible. At least name it Spanky and Stewie, you know? DD Speed Shop, step up your dog naming skills. Anyway, till the next one. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, so long as you're having fun. Carpentry, real fun. Not for this guy. On to the next one. Another tech tip, don't get asphyxiated 
in your garage, yeah, don't get asphyxiated. Don't get fixed on one just because you're in a 67 to 72 Chevy pickups or Tri Fives or 59 Chevy Palace. Look around. There's, I picked up this car. You'll see it in the auction. I picked it up really reasonable. You can see my price in the video description. Yeah, I'm gonna make money on it. I spent the time to go down there and fuel. I spent the day to do that. I gambling with my own money on buying it. I spent a few days cleaning it up. Uh, my popularity or notoriety is also probably gonna help me sell this thing, which I put a lot of work to get where we're at. So yeah, don't cry that I'm gonna make money off this car. But also, you can do the exact same thing. You could be out finding these things. I was at that auction, it was a public auction. Everybody could have been there. Anybody else could have bid on this car. So uh, there's a lot of potential here. And go buy Datsun Mini pickups, 280Zs, 82 Corvettes. Did they make Corvettes in 82? Or was it 83 that they didn't make them? Anyway, this, this stuff is out there and it doesn't have to be car related. It can be tools, it can be, you see a good deal on a welder, it's 300 bucks, go pick it up, turn around, flip it for a thousand. That's what I've done for years and that's what got me to where I'm at. So tech tip of the day, don't be afraid to buy something if you know that there's a market and you know you can make a little money on it. So, all right, that's it. Back to work. Should we deliver some packages, Duff? Go for a ride? Yeah. Do some Black Friday shopping? Just kidding. Maybe shopping for junk in the trees. Taking a break from our regular scheduled shenanigans to put together a 9,000 pound wildfire lift. This particular version's a 9,000 XLT, 9,000 pound, extra large, extra tall. Works great for tall guys like me. Big vehicles like dualies and stuff. We're at my dad's place. He needs more storage as we all do. So we're gonna start stacking some cars. So here we go, brought Mojo with. Hopefully knock it out quick. This thing got delivered to my place. Had the telehandler to unload it. And then we just unloaded it with the skid steer here. We put it together, huh, Duff? Did you go swimming? Yeah? Take a bath. 20 minutes later, we got her all unpacked. You better have a dumpster ready to fill up with plastic. These things are packed pretty well. Then we gotta lay out our pillars, knock the end caps out. Set the side posts in, and we set these on it, hook the cables up, easy peasy, lemon squeezy.
There you have it, about three hours, a little less, two hours, 45 minutes. Next one will be even quicker. You can see just how much higher this one goes than this uh, competitive model. And uh, they're lined up here. This one's about two feet longer, so you can get the old crew cab dualies on there. All right, now back to your regular scheduled programming. Huge thanks to Wildfire List for working with us and providing such a great product. Go check those guys out. Wildfire Lifts. Tell them Mordsky say ya. They're Duff approved. Right Duff? Are you eating acorns again? You know you're not a squirrel, right? Goof.